Sunday in the season of Pentecost, a special welcome to our visitors and our guests. We're glad that you're here. We hope that you have a few moments following uh, worship today to come down to the community hall because this year is the 20th anniversary of pumpkin spice being a <laughs> And in honor of that, Lisa was a traveler, she had a big thing of pumpkin spice creamer. Uh, so anyways, that's not there. That might tempt you to stay here. But uh, we keep some people in our prayers this morning. Um, I just heard word yesterday that Cindy Sandman was in an accident. Did you hear this? No. And she's paralyzed. Oh um, kind of has a little bit of feeling. They're hoping that things will come back. But I think kind of from there down, like her arms, her legs and things. Mm -hmm. So I had just heard that yesterday and, uh, from Gaylord. And uh, so anyways, prayers for Cindy. Uh, they did some surgery on C3 and 4, <clears throat> put a cage around her um, area here and trying to just sort of protect her so that maybe she can recover. Cindy uh, lost her son, Jeff Sandman, with the accident with the wasp stings and things, you've heard that. So yeah, um, Chuck Cummings, and Roni's cousin, we're keeping in our prayers. Um, Deb Shaw, we're keeping in our prayers, he's here. Where are you, Deb? There you are, wait, I should know if you're sitting back. So Deb is recovering. Um, Keegan, our little granddaughter, had surgery to put a feeding cord in. Came through it great, uh, doing well, thank you. Isaac and Brian Johnson in Croatia, the family and friends of Diane Pat, which is Susan Johnson's mother who passed away. Her services will be next week, I believe on uh, Sunday. Lana Harrison and Walt Pointer, uh, families, both in our prayers. Walt service was held here yesterday. And uh, thank you to those who came and thanks to those who helped make that happen. I call this my bonus weekend because I got to see Carrie twice. <laughs> so, Carrie, thanks for being here yesterday. Uh, Lisa Dykstra, Marianne Anderson, Bernie Ur Urban in our prayers, Doug Duran as he recovers, Charlie Sessoms as he recovers and uh, Mitchell Zwed in our prayers. Today the flowers are in uh, memory and in celebration of the memory of Doug Luther by Carol, and uh, we remember and celebrate Doug's memory all the time around here. Crafters for the Bazaar, uh, meeting September 15th and 29th. 
The bazaar is set for November 5th. Big day for us. Uh, from 10 until 2 will be the bazaar. Um, thanks to everyone who helped in the garden this past week. If you haven't walked in the garden in a while, you might want to. It's absolutely beautiful right now. Youth event, Sunday, October 1st, after the 11 o'clock service. Um, check out the table of amazing prizes and things and gifts. We're going to just try to lure the kids back in uh, now that it's uh, fall again. So Bingo's Prizes Street, that'll be Sunday, October 1st. Pastor Rick. Yes. I want to say something. Okay. It's not just for the youth. It's not, for the youth. It's not just for the youth. <laughs> you guys can come and play bingo and get prizes. <laughs> it's going to be a really fun day, so please come participate. It's going to be a lot of fun. And check out the prize table, because keep your eye on the things you want. <laughs> I selfishly was trying to get less people to come. Yeah. <laughs> right. So next week is going to be a different uh, worship schedule for Trinity. Next Saturday at 5 o'clock we're going to gather for church for worship. Because on Sunday, as many of you know who live in town, the Iron Man is happening. And by 5 a.m. every stitch of grass is, is, is filled with a car. So uh, we're going to be meeting next Saturday, 5 p.m. for worship um, here at the church. And uh, we certainly welcome you to join us. No services then on Sunday. One last thing I'd like to say. Um, I think one of the greatest gifts, you probably get tired of me saying this, that we can offer to other people is mercy. I think it's our superpower as a congregation. It's one of the gifts that God gives to us that we can pass along uh, to others. So having said that, I'd like to welcome home a friend and extend grace, love, and mostly mercy to a person that we have been praying for for many years. Um, Kelly Stapleton, you want to come up?
seems extra appropriate, do I have you stand and let us join together in confession and forgiveness. <laughs> If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So let us confess our sin to God, who is faithful and just, and who has promised to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we are not to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives us a new birth. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives us all our sins. Almighty God, strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. First reading is from the book of Ezekiel. So you mortal, I have made sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O oh, wicked ones, you surely shall die. And you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways. The wicked shall die in inequity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now you mortal, say to the house of Israel, Thus you have said, Our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then shall we live? Say to them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways. 
For why would you die, O house of Israel? We will read Psalm 119 responsibly. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Lead me in the path of your commandment, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees, and not to my justice. Turn my eyes from beholding falsehood. Give me life in your way. that I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments, for I have righteousness in my being. The second reading is from the book of Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law, the commandments. You shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, for it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desire. Here ends the readings. <clears throat> against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if the two of you agree on earth about anything that you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, Christ. Please be seated. Self differentiation. I know I've never started off a sermon with that word before. Self differentiation is the ability to remain within yourself, uh, even in the face of stress, disagreement, anxiety, angst. Anything that the world throws us, to be self-differentiated is to remain steadfast, faithful, literally, to, to remain in the same place in a calm sort of manner. Not easy to do. To not become too defensive, combative, or self-righteous, right? Those are our temptations that we want to jump into and kind of protect ourselves with. How difficult to do. Well, I remember hearing years ago that even the people who are super self-differentiated and do it better than anybody else can maybe do it 70% of the time. 
So heads up, today's sermon is about you. <laughs> and about me too. Are you ready for this? How to get along with difficult people, right? According to Jesus, that is. Uh, so that your actions and your behaviors and your words reflect God's will and Christ's love. That's the point. So the point isn't just how I can sort of survive difficult people. The point is how I can grow in my relationship with difficult people, right, as they come into our lives. So number one, let's go through the steps, three easy steps. I'm sure you guys follow these all the time. Number one, if someone sins against you, right, go and discuss it with a third party. Maybe your friends or the guy down at the bar, anyone with an opinion that might side with you. That's the best way. To, oh, hold it, hold it. Jeez, I, I read that wrong. <laughs> oh yeah, if someone sins against you, hurts you, speaks bad of you, breaks your trust, cheats on you, go to them, right? That's step number one, right? And usually step number one takes care of it. You don't even have to worry about step two and three. Go to them and talk to them in love, right? Tell them what they did wrong. Keep it between you two, only you two. And if they listen, great. And if you listen, even better. I kind of snuck that one in there, right? So if they listen and they go, oh, geez, I'm so sorry. I didn't even realize I hurt you. Then you've regained that one. But if you listen to the words coming out of your mouth and you listen to what they're saying to you, you might just grow and be changed. But if they don't listen to you, then post it on Facebook. <laughs> Tweet about how upset and how hurt you are. Post pictures on Instagram, and if possible, make a TikTok video secretly exposing how horrible they are. Oh, jeez, I did it again. I misread that. I might have read it wrong. So if they don't listen to you, remain calm. Find a couple of other non-reactive people to help you out. Go to them again and try to connect in love. All the while speaking calmly, even if they get defensive or reactive or angry, stay calm, stay connected. Try that. But what if they refuse step number two? Well, now you can let them have it with both barrels. Now that your friends are involved, hold an organizational meeting to turn others against them. That unrepentant sinner. Start rumors if possible. Condemn them at a city council meeting. That's good. And get your kids involved. Oops, hold on. Number three, I did it again. Let me reread the gospel. Okay, here's the gospel. If they don't listen to you, and if they don't listen to you and some other witnesses that you bring with you, yes, here it is. Tell it to the church, it says. Run it through the community of faith. Examine what God's word might say about this situation. And be prepared to make your case to God. And God forbid, what if someone even refuses to listen to Pastor Rick? I mean the church. Then from that point on, don't treat them as a brother or sister in faith. That's what the gospel says. But rather, instead, treat them as a tax collector or sinner. Remember those phrases, tax collector or sinner. Three quick thoughts. Number one, this gospel is not a formula for correcting sinners. This is not a formula for you and I to look at and go, huh, there's a lot of people in my life i got to impose this stuff on, right? It's an invitation for us to grow and change through reconciliation. At every turn, we are invited by God to risk connection, even risking connection to the people who do us wrong, even risking connection to the people who completely blow it, in our opinion. Go one-on-one, -on -one. talk to the person who has hurt you, and you might just hear their story. How is that going to change the situation? You might just understand their situation and life. 
How will that change the situation? And most of the time, that's where it will end, I think, with step number one, as we connect and we talk. But you are also risking vulnerability about hearing about yourself. The underlying power in today's gospel reading is not about how you and I can correct somebody else, right? The power is that when we enter into a process of connection with somebody else who has heard us, we will be changed. We will grow. We will become deeper. The, the, the power of reconciliation is that when we reconcile with another human being, we are reflecting the power of God. That's why we go and talk to somebody. We might just hear about ourselves as we share our opinions and our judgments and our feelings, you open yourself to change. Number two, in this process, we are also stopping something really important. We're stopping the using of Jesus as a cosigner on our own assumptions or our own interpretations or our own opinions or our own judgments. We're going back to God's word, right? And we're not just using Jesus to back us up because we have an opinion or a judgment. Well, Jesus says, you know this, and we start pointing the fingers. No, this is where we risk stop using Jesus as a cosigner on our own will. Because you know what? This is going to hurt some of you. You might just be wrong. You might just be wrong. Number three. <clears throat> I know that that last step, the third step, where you take it to the church, and uh, that doesn't work out, I know that um, you didn't really hear it. Because if you would have really heard it, you would have busted out laughing. This is one of the funniest conclusions that Matthew writes in his gospel. Here it is. If they don't listen to you, and they don't listen to you and a couple other people, and if they don't even listen to the church, then treat them as a person that Jesus has come to love and die for. Tax collectors and sinners. Who did Jesus come for? He says, I didn't come for the righteous good people. I came for sinners. That's who I came for. So if these people don't listen to you, by golly, you treat them as a sinner. And you have to love them and be willing to die for them. What? That's powerful. If Christ has not written off people, then you and I can't write off people either if we're a follower of Christ. We can't write them off. We can recognize maybe that they're hurtful. We might recognize that we don't really trust them anymore. But we cannot write them off. We continue to love. So Jesus is not saying to ignore people's behavior when it's bad. Jesus isn't saying to us, just smile and be happy. Whatever people do, that's great. That's not what Jesus is saying here. But he is saying, speak the truth in love, right? If you're going to speak the truth to somebody, you have to do it with love. I think one of my pet peeves is people who say some really horribly mean things, and I go, wow, that seems really rough. And they go, well, it's the truth. That's a pet peeve of mine. Because I always want to say it's the truth, but where's the love? I mean, great, so you're speaking the truth. But you realize that the truth is also being spoken to you. Love without truth is sentimentality. It's just syrupy, it's sweet. You know, hey, everything's great, everybody's fine. That's not what Jesus wants. But neither does he want truth without love, which is brutality. Hold them both together. I think today's gospel is an invitation for us to hold them both together. Go to them and be open that maybe you are the one that needs to be forgiven.
together now in our confession of faith, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, for those in need, and for all of God's good creation. Dear God, give us the strength to speak to people directly, to speak the truth in love, and to love others truthfully. Give us the wisdom to follow your will, to expose our shortcomings and wrong judgments, and give us the grace to grow and change instead of insisting on our own way. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we pray for an end to fighting and to war. We pray for those who suffer and whose lives are destroyed. Strengthen the people and allow healing and recovery to begin. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God, our helper, come to the aid of those who cry for help. Bring healing and strength to those who are sick or hurting. We pray for Cindy Sandman, Chuck Cummings, Nancy Vanderlindy, Dennis Crosby and Deb Shaw, Marianne Anderson, the family and friends of Diane Watts, for Mei Ying and Bernie Irvin, Doug Duran and Charlie Sessoms, Landon Shively and Amy Bordelin, Caroline Yast and Amanda Olson, Gerhard Johnson, Charlotte Price, Lori Watts, Ray and Angela Jameson, Deb Donnelly, Patty Witzke, Barb Ward, Vicki Blood, Rosalie McLenathan, Carolyn Vitale, and Keegan Steve. And for the names we carry in our hearts, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We give thanks for the flowers this morning as we join with Carol Luther in celebrating the memory of Doug, a friend, a church leader, a compassionate and caring person who kept the grace of God always before him. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of our Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please take a couple <coughs> moments to greet those around you.
which he has betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join together in the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated, but come, for all things are ready, and all people are welcome at God's table. Thank you.
please stand and let us sing. Feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and the delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you and remain with you always. Amen. and serve the Lord.